So, in the last video, I decided to talk about how Helldiver 2 technically doesn't have a meta. And in this video, we're going to be doing a little bit of a follow-up video, as I mentioned in the video. Like I said, as I mentioned in the video, I was gonna make a tier list video on what I think about every single stratagem in Helldiver 2, as well as my thoughts of them and how they can be improved. Now, keep in mind, this is an entirely subjective tier list. This is not the objective truth, though so take this with a grain of salt. This was all recorded on twitch.tv slash TV, if you're wondering where we go live at around 2 p.m. CET almost every single day. So, hope to see you, hope to see you over there. Now, keep in mind that the tier list is ordered from left to right, meaning that the closer you are to the top left position, the stronger you are as a stratagem, technically. So, if you see one of your stratagems being in front or behind another stratagem, then it means that they're either stronger or weaker. You all are free to, you know, agree with me or disagree with me, or even discuss the tiers over in the comment section, but as long as you keep it all civil, I won't really mind. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So this tier list that we're going to be making goes over, you know, all of the strategies. All of the current ones from blues to yellows. I mean, from greens to blues to reds. Right? And we're going to be going over every... Oh, we're going to be going over every single one of the strategies. Um, as well as... As well as just t talk about what we think of the shadow gem, right? But I think we're first going to be starting over. What, what do you guys want me to do first? Uh, red, red, blue, or green? Actually, we'll, we'll just do like this, right? We'll just do like this. Starting off with the heavy machine gun. Yeah, that's the heavy machine gun. I would honestly put it on A. Also, this tier list is ordered. This, in my opinion, is a really good weapon. Super solid still. It holds up strong. It's a weapon that does good damage, has medium armor penetration, and just overall is very strong against bugs and bots alike. There are better options, especially against the bots, because you need more precision versus the bots. But you don't need to worry about it as much, right? Moving on, the sniper, S tier. This is honestly like one of the best bot weapons to deal with. This weapon is fucking phenomenal versus bots, and it's not even close. It's actually not even close. It's one hit headshot most of the bots enemies and it can deal with tanks artillery cannons and hulks with pretty much very with, with, with a lot of ease honestly very strong the light machine gun i would honestly put it in b it has its purpose as a small horde cleaner and it has the comfortability of the fact that you can run while reloading but I don't think it packs enough of a punch to be a support weapon. If you get what I mean. It's kind of weak. It, like, it's good against small bugs. But then when you, when you go up to, like, guards, um, guards, brood commanders, and, you know, like, the upper, upper tier of those, then it's, you're not, you're not killing shit. It, it'll take you forever. This, uh, eats, I'm making an, I'm making its own tier. That's its own tier. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirits. This thing is ridiculous. It's stupid. This thing is insane. This thing is fucking ridiculous. Honestly. Uh, what My main reason why I think it's so strong is because of the fact that it just does it all. Short cooldown, 70 seconds. You can have it as a support. Support for your support weapon. If four people run run these, then you'll basically sweep through everything, right? Um, short cooldown, it can one-hit a lot of enemies, it does good damage in general, and it's just very accessible to use. Like, you get two shots each. Two quick shots. I think it's very strong. I think it's very, very strong. Next up, the recoilless rifle. I'd put it in A. Under the machine gun because of the fact that it's good it's very good it's 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 a big eat right but the reason the reason why i think it's weaker is because you need a teammate to make it optimal otherwise it's gonna it's just gonna be a slower eat that's it there's no other there's no other thing behind it it's that's the reason flamethrower i would honestly put it in a, a as well i'd put it in a very strong insanely strong a bit too strong especially against teammates it does a bit too much damage for, you know, in terms of team killing and stuff, right? There's way too much damage for team killing. 
But aside from that, it's very good. It does good damage. It kills off pretty much every single bug in the game with ease. The auto cannon, good, but I don't think it's as good as the sniper. Why, you may ask? Well, because you need a backpack slot or a teammate to make it proper. I know it has a fast reload, but it's the fact that you lose a backpack slot, which I personally think that it loses over the sniper. The only de the one redeeming quality that it has, though, compared to the sniper, is that it can easily deal with every single armored enemy because it's got sh it's got a bigger penetration uh, property than the sniper, and it can also destroy fabricators as well as I think bug holes, if I remember correctly. So overall, it's very good. It's really really good. Heavy machine gun, C, C tier. Why? Uh, too too clunky to use. It's it kicks too hard. And it also, well, when I tried it out, it did not have a, it did not have a non-first person scope. But I, they added that, so I'm going to need to try this again. But as of right now, my personal opinion, it's on C. It's just a weaker machine gun. Air bursts. Uh, that's, that's all you need to know. Probably a good weapon though. It's bugged though, on the other hand. Aside from the bugs, it's probably very good. Especially good at clearing. I feel like it would be really good. Next up, the railgun. Honestly, I would put it in A tier. It does what it does. It does what it's supposed to do. Good damage. Can penetrate every enemy. It's a precision weapon. It can destroy a lot of stuff. Vice versa. The nerfs were a bit too much. If, if the nerf wasn't as bad, I would have just put it like up here. But since it got nerfed, and it's got nerfed pretty hard, it's gonna be right here, for now. Until they buff the weapon again, at some point. Spear! Bugged. If the spear wasn't bugged, and the lock-on actually worked, I would've put it right here. Like, between here. But as of right now, it's bugged. Jetpack? Um, I'd put it at jetpack in B, honestly. It helps, you, it helps with mobility quite a lot, which is pretty good. It's actually... Actually, pretty decent in terms of um, oh, the, the things you can do with it, right? But I personally don't use it as much as other backpacks, so I'm gonna put it here. Moving on, this is the Guard Dog Rover. I'm putting this one in B tier because because it's very strong, but also kills you nine times out of ten. That's about it. The shield. Mm. The shield I would put on situational. The shield I would put on the situational tier. Because it is pretty d decent whenever it works, but it's not you don't really have a lot of situations where it will be super useful except for versus the bots. But uh, once that new submachine gun comes up, then I may actually rate this higher because well, if the submachine gun's actually good then yeah. But as of right now, it's situational. It works. It's pretty decent. But you won't need to use this. It's, it won't be useful in every situation. Or a lot of situations. Arc Thrower? I would honestly put this up here. I think the Arc Thrower is very good. Even though they nerfed it. Actually, I'll move this. The Arc Thrower is strong. Even though they nerfed it quite a lot. Huge DPS decrease. But it's still solid, it does what it's supposed to do, you know, killing big targets, killing small targets, killing a lot of targets, even your teammates. Moving on, the Quasar Cannon. The Quasar Cannon goes into the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit category because this weapon does it all, almost. It's very strong because it can deal with every single big target very easily. It's very fun to use as well. It's very, very fun to use. I love using this weapon. It's so much fun using. It's one of the. It's one of my favorite weapons of all time, because it's just a giant fucking laser. It's like a Spartan laser, bro. You you hold it up, and it's like boom, and you like kill everything, right? It's it's like a sleeper simulant from Destiny. I love it. It's so much fun to use. It feels good to use as well. My only issue with the weapon is the fact that it's. Is a bit too strong. They're nerfing the weapon. They've already nerfed the weapon, but it's still really strong. Do I want? It, do they? Do I want them to be to nerf it? No, I do not want them to nerf it. It's a. It's in a perfect spot right now, but it's just inherently very strong because of the fact that it has infinite ammo. It recharges semi quickly in the cold and very slowly in the hot heat, which is where its main weakness comes from. 
And it's a very precise weapon with a great scope. It doesn't take a backpack slot either, which is what makes it super good. Also, it looks fucking amazing. I love the design of the weapon. Laser cannon. Nah, I'm only messing. Uh, the laser cannon. I haven't really used the laser cannon a lot, I'm gonna be honest. But I've heard that the laser cannon is fucking phenomenal. So what I'm gonna do, because I've seen a little bit of gameplay of it, I'm gonna put it right here for now in A tier, in mid A or mid high A, because the, the, the clips I've seen actually make it look pretty strong. Honestly, it looks pretty strong. The guard dog with a primary weapon with a liberator. I will put this in C. It does good damage. It does it does great damage. It uh, It's very precise. It rarely shoots you in the head as well. But the issue is it's, uh, it's a limited weapon. It does not have unlimited ammo. The shame. And it's, very, it's a very expensive weapon to feed as well. I think it takes like three. Uh, yeah, I think it takes like around three uh, supply packs to uh, actually fully fe feed it. So aside from that, it's a very good weapon, but downsides are very heavy for it. The grenade launcher is an S tier, personally. Why, you may ask? You Like, you may be thinking, this this Chroma fella is fucking insane, right? Um, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's, he's actually insane. He's lost it, type thing. Um... But it's probably one of the best in terms of Blitz. It's one of Blitz's best weapons to use because it's just, you shoot it, bang, the fabricator or the bug hole goes down. It's a very good hit and run weapon and it deals with a lot of small hordes pretty easily. The only, the, the only bad thing about it is it doesn't deal with heavy targets and heavily armored targets very well. But aside from that, it takes one slot, not, it does not take a backpack slot. Great damage, really good for for blitz modes, and great at taking out fabricators as well as bug holes. And it's very useful. It's very new player friendly. Light pack. Here comes a personal bias of mine, but I love playing the support role in Helldivers 2. I'm gonna put this in the Holy Spirit. This is like the backbone of a Helldivers 2 team. At times, the amount of times a backpack has saved my team is ridiculous it's way too good to not have at least one on your team because it just it's it's a free refill you can give stims to your teammates you can give stims to yourself you can fill up people's ammos you can fill up recoilless rifles you can fill up auto cannons you can fill up spears as i mentioned you can fill up rovers with it you can even fill up lmgs and rail guns you can fill up everything so it's just a really good thing to bring on with you. For the ter for the mechs, the mech I personally think it is in A. The reason I think the mech is an A and not an S is because it's only really strong against bugs. It's paper mache versus the bots, but it's very very solid versus the bugs. Um, it's got a lot of ammo. You can you can clear hordes with it. It's semi durable. It can tag about like two chargers head on but versus the bots it's a different story the weapon fucking sucks versus the bots i literally drop i literally drop a mech in and two things later it gets shot down by a rocket devastator as i climb into it and i die type thing but aside from that it's a very strong weapon versus the bugs it's really fun as well to use i love using the mech it's hella fun yo the very big downfall that the mech has is the very very long cooldown as well as it's Ability that, well, it's limitation with ammo, since you can't reload it, which is a design choice. I don't really mind it. It's It's been like that since Helldivers 1, that you cannot reload the mechs, but it's a downfall nevertheless. Shield backpack, S tier, very good. It's a one-time protection versus pretty much everything. The only bad thing it is, is it, it takes a long time to recharge once it's broken. But aside from that, it's, it can save your skin in a lot of situations. Especially if you play against the bots where they, there's a lot of guns, there's a lot of sniping, there's a lot of artillery towers and mortars and stuff. This will probably save you. I almost always bring it if I don't know what to bring and we already have a support pack. So this is my second choice for backpack most of the time. Moving on to the, the Gatling towers. I mean the reds. The Gatling barrage 
I would put it on B above here. Yeah. Why, why do I say so? Because it's very good, especially if you complement it with other stratagems. It's great at dealing with small hordes of enemies and bug breaches and bot drops and stuff. It's very good at dealing with the creeps, the ads, it's the trash mobs. But then it falls off short with armored enemies because, you know, you can't really penetrate armor with it. Air Burst. It's pretty much the same as Gatling Barrage, but more concentrated. It chooses Bursts instead of a just a Gatling gun. It's a, it's just It has the same strength and same weakness. 180 millimeters Barrage. I would put this below here. I honestly do not think this is very good. It's not the like it's not the most worthless thing in the game, but I don't really think it's that good either because well I mean the big brother is already there and can handle everything else. The main the main issue is why would you use this when you can use something like an airstrike or a walking barrage or anything else to be honest. Like it works, you can use it. It's perfectly fine. But I personally don't really like to use it that much. Didn't they buff it though? They did buff it, but I don't think it's good enough. Still, it's 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 not about the consistency, right? It's about the lethality of it. That's where it falls off. Like you can use it; it's pretty strong, but I don't really I don't really see myself using it as much as you know, like an airstrike or stuff, which are faster to cast. They are faster to reload, and they just come in more uses. Now, the 380mm, on the other hand, I would put around here. Hear me out. I know people say that this is one of the biggest team-killing strategies in the game, but it's also one of the best fabricator destroyer. It's also one of the best area denial tools. It's also one of the best base destroyers. Given you need to actually know how to use it, or you will just completely blow up your team. You need to also coordinate with your team that you're actually using this and you need to be careful and mindful of where you throw it as well as if you can be knocked down or not because the second this thing lands it, it may be game over for your team with the upgrade to the barrage shadow gems which concentrates the barrage a bit more makes it makes it way nicer as well it it lessens the amount of kills and deaths you get on your team but it also increases the lethality of it onto bases making it so you can actually hit stuff way easier, more consistently. Overall, it's very strong, and it has a lot of use cases, especially versus the bots, but there will be times where you don't hit anything at all, or you will hit stuff on the outer edge, and you will just leave like the center completely just, you know, clean, full. So you'll have to go into the base yourself and destroy whatever is left. And if you do not place it properly, then it may actually not hit anything at all, and you'll just have to clean the base. But overall, it's a good thing to throw in into a base before you go in and raid the base, because it will clean up a lot of enemies in there. Walking Barrage? Right here. Why you may be, why you may be asking? It's because it gives you a very, very solid advance option versus the bots. Since the bots like to push against you, if you throw an orbital walking barrage towards the bots, then you'll just make yourself a path towards the bots or the fabricators or whatever. It's really strong because if you throw it and you aim it properly, then it'll just walk over everything and just fucking kill shit. You can deal with fabricators, with nests, with anything, but it's very strong versus the bots, especially against it, especially against like pushing into bases and pushing away. Next up, the Hammer of Dawn. Right here, baby. It's very good. Very, 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 very good. The only weakness it has is sometimes it just doesn't do enough damage or there's too many big targets. Or you'll run out of cooldowns because, you know, it has a long cooldown and it has three uses. So once, you, once those three uses are gone, then they're gone. But aside from that, really good at taking down bots and bug bases. Um, very good at killing big targets and a lot of hordes fucking annihilates everything that is in a bile titan that's about it very strong rail cannon strike same thing mm, i'd argue that it's better honestly slightly very very slightly better than the 
the hammer of none. Reason being is because it's just a one-time use that can just slap anything. You see an artillery tower? Slap. You see a fabricator? Slap it. You see a heavy charger? Kill it. Hulk? Kill it. Tank? Kill it. It's fast. It does good damage. It has a short-ish cooldown. And it's a very precise thing. It's very rarely inconsistent. I've had times where it just like randomly flies off and shoots a walker instead of a tank, but it's a rare occasion. Aside from that, it's very strong. Uh, moving on, we have the strafing run. I think the strafing run, honestly, um, it goes around here. It's good against hordes, small bugs, and small bots. And it is similar to the walking barrage, except without the explosive perk, but it's more rapid. It's pretty alright, it's pretty decent, I like it, it's fun. It does good damage, it does clearing pretty well. But the weakness is the fact that it's a non-explosive, non-lethal type thing. It can't really deal with bots and, I mean, bot fabricators and bug holes or anything. So it kind of falls off short there. Moving on, we have the airstrike, which, like I mentioned, very, very good. Insanely good. It's a 180, but but better. It shoots a, a horizontal line of explosives. It can deal with fabricators, bug holes, titans, tanks, artillery towers, hulks. Very strong. It has three uses. It's amazing. I love it. It's so much fun to use. Also, you get to hear Eagle's one voice. Horizontal line these nuts. That is insane. Moving on, we have Cluster Bombs. Uh, I would put it around, honestly, here. Because it's very strong, but it can team kill and it can kill mechs very easily. It's good against bugs when they are just like fucking running your ass down, right? It's really good around those times. But aside from that, uh, you're 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 off better off using like an air strike or 500 kilo or something. Incendiary, same case. Very strong. This thing is a beast versus bugs, especially if you complement it using the Gatling barrage or the air burst. These two and this complement each other so much. You can you can drop a you can drop an incendiary air strike, create a wall of fire, and you put an air burst or a Gatling barrage right on top of it. And anything that tries to walk past just fucking dies, right? It's really strong. If you see a bug breach and you're scared that, you know, oh fuck, there's gonna be a lot of enemies swarming me, incendiary right on top of it, drop a Gatling barrage or air burst right on top of it, bang. Clean, done, easy. Done and dusted, move along. Smoke strike. You can fight me on this. Smoke strike is. Probably one of the best air strikes in the game because it completely removes line of sight from bots, for example, and bugs. But it's not as useful as like bugs. It is a fucking ridiculous versus pretty much every type of bot. What you can do is you can, if you have a narrow corridor, right, and you want to funnel people in, what you can do, put just dr drop the air strike right alongside the corridor and just create a wall and it will just funnel every single bot into walking down that corridor because they don't know where you are so they'll just slowly blind fire through as they're walking which just gives makes them easy targets they don't know where you are once they go through the smoke because they'll have to turn towards you and then start aiming and shooting so it's really good at creating funnel situations where you want to kill kill people or lure them in towards you it's also really good against getaway situations where, for example, you're being chased by multiple artillery tanks, uh, multiple artillery towers in a the distance, there's hulks chasing you, and so drop an air, drop a smoke strike and just get the fuck out and they'll, they'll lose you instantly if you're fast enough. Rocket pods. I would put them honestly here. Rocket pods has their uses. But they're not as consistent as the Rail Cannon Strike. The Rail Cannon Strike, personally, I think is significantly better than the Rocket Pods. But the Rocket Pods has a positive bonus of having multiple uses and multiple rockets used before they end. 
Braille Counter-Strike is a single, single fucking nuke that drops on top of an enemy and they die instantly. 500 kilogram. I would put it right here. Right in the middle, right here. Why, you may ask? Well, you see, it's inconsistent. Sometimes you kill about 200 enemies in a single, in a single 500 kilo. Other times, it doesn't even kill a tiny ass hunter next to it. Sometimes, it completely one hit kills nine different bio titans, and sometimes it doesn't even do damage to one of them when it dropped on top of their head. It's a strong strategy, but it's very inconsistent at times. I use it a lot, but there are better options. I use it because it's a, it's very fun to use. Giant explosions, like who doesn't like fucking massive explosions? Am I right? But very inconsistent. It's good against raiding bases though. Raiding bases and bug bug holes, really good. And it's insanely good against taking out eggs. If you have a mission where you need to destroy hatcheries and eggs, bring a 500 kilo, bring a flamethrower, bring ex bring a lot of explosives, and just fucking walk into the base, kill everything. Drop a 500 kilo, angle it properly, bang. That's that's the entire thing done. Orbital railgun. Hmm, I put it here. It's strong, but it has its downfall. It has its downfall. It, there's a lot of competition versus this thing. And it just doesn't do well versus a lot of the other reds. Smoke strike. Do not sleep on a smoke strike. Loki, do not sleep on a smoke strike. I know a lot of people hate smoke strikes, but uh, no, it's not a smoke strike. It's a gas strike. A lot of people hate on the gas strike, but there's a secret behind the gas strike. It's actually a better orbital strike. It has the same properties as a, an orbital strike, with it being explosive. It can destroy objectives, but it also does damage over time to you and your teammates. If you complement this with something like an incendiary, or even as we're going to be talking about in a second, EMS, EMS strike, this is a very, very good thing at, at dealing with bug breaches. Very strong against the dealing with bug breaches. Moving on, orbital EMS strike. I would put this in B. I mean A, low A. Because it's an EMS, it shuts down basically everything. It no it knows every enemy. Stops them dead in their tracks, makes them stop shooting, and just deagros. Very nice. I love it. And again, as I mentioned, if you complement it with a gas strike, or if you complement EMS with like an incendiary. Then you're vibing, you're chilling. Same thing with a Gatling strike and an air burst. This is a very complementary strategy. The only issue is, in order to utilize it as properly as possible, you need to waste two stratagem slots. So if you do not know what to run, then this is a good strategy. But aside from that, then you won't really have a lot of use for it. But it's all. But it's, in general, it's very strong. If we're looking at it just alone. It's generally very strong. Smoke Strike. I personally think this is a weaker version of the... Um, I think it's a weaker version of the Smoke Strike. Because it's just a single giant ball. And it's a very slow, slow process as well. It takes like... It, it, it shoots small blobs that explode over time. Unlike the Airstrike, which just, just blitzes straight through. And it creates a giant wall instantly, right? It's very strong, but it's just completely overshadowed by the airstrike version. Moving on to the greens. HMG? Mm. HMG, I would put somewhere around low... High, high C, low B, I would put it here. Not because it's bad. It's actually pretty decent. But it's just... it's It doesn't have enough use cases. It's, it's a situational item. Actually... Put it a situational. It's a power defense specialist. It's very good at defending zones and holding off zones, but it's very weak against heavy units. It's really good against medium, medium and light armored enemies, so like really good. But then aside from that, it's very situational. Since you can't really move it, it turns very slowly and it has limited ammo. Shield, I'll put it here. Shield generator, I would put it in mid B. It gives you a safe zone versus for example, bo bots. What you can do is, if you're scared and you don't have a lot of cover, drop it down next to you and you have a little safe haven until something either walks into it or the timer runs out. It's really good at just creating safe zones, right? And then, moving on, everybody's favorite, the Tesla Tower. I'm making a new tier list for this. I'm making a new tier list for this. 
We're not any lit tier for this. Please don't use a side from defense. This, the Tesla Tower is fucking phenomenal uh, for defense missions. But, oh my goodness, is it bad everywhere else. You should definitely not use this in general play. Because it's it kills your team so much. Because the range of it is very deceptive. It's very, it has a very deceptive range. From what I've noticed. I, I'm not discouraging people from using it in normal missions. But I would recommend against it. And missions where you basically play the blues tower defense is makes the makes this very strong. The one where you have like gates that you can close down and stuff like that. That one makes the Tesla Tower so good. It, it's insane. It's a really good area denial tool, and I think everybody should try it out at least once. Honestly, it's because it's a it's actually pretty solid. Aside from general play. Also, if you have the passive to reduce the damage of lightning damage, it makes it very, way nicer. I would recommend everybody who wants to use it, use that. And also warn their teammates to use it as well. The mines are the same. The mines serve as insanely good area denial tools. But, and I mean a massive but, if you have seen my old clips on, on my YouTube, and if you have been keeping up with my Twitch, and you know, you already know what I think about mines. Oh god, another escort mission. <laughs> I need, I gotta reload. What? Huh? <laughs> oh, there's mines up there. Oh! <laughs> it's a very strong tool. But holy fuck is it annoying. Oh my goodness. They're pretty solid area denial tools. They're good for defense missions. And they're also good at dist killing civilians. That's about it. Turrets. Machine turrets. It's alright. It's solid. It doesn't kill you as consistently. It's, it doesn't kill you as much as its bigger brother, but it's pretty good. It's alright. I think the strengths with the Gatling turret and the machine turret is the fact that they're really good at holding off zones and defense. But then... They completely fucking kill you if you step wrong. So I'm gonna put them around the same area. They're very strong, but... The issue is they can just kill you so quickly. Without a second warning as well. Moving on, we have the mortar turrets. Mortar turrets are f fucking dangerous. Do not use them aside from defense. Please do not use them aside from defense. They kill teammates very quickly. They kill civilians very quickly. They kill enemies very quickly. They're very good at killing. And they do not discriminate. They do not discriminate. They see you and they kill you. They see an enemy, they kill the enemy. They see a civilian, they don't fucking think twice. They they will drop that shit right on top of them. And then they will blame you, the player who dropped them. They will blame you for killing the civilian. And then you'll probably get kicked from the lobby because you, uh, you wiped the entire team about six times. You know, stuff like that. Unless you're the host, you know. I like the mortars. I think the mortars are fun. I think they're cool. But do not use them. Aside from area denial and defense, is my recommendation, personally. The auto cannon turret, I would put this in A. Right here. Really good at taking down big targets, small targets. It kind of struggles with small targets, honestly. But it's very good at clearing big targets. It rarely kills you. It, it has the opportunity and the chance to accidentally shoot you in the foot and kill you. But it rarely does it from what I've noticed. It is a rare case. Moving on. The missile turrets. Oh, yeah, I'd say it's the same. Loe. It's pretty good because it targets the biggest target available. And it shoots the biggest target available. It's it's kind of like the little brother of the autocannon in terms of sheer power. But it makes it up for it being smarter than the bigger brother. If you get what I mean. And then finally. The EMS mortar turrets. Which honestly... I'm gonna be honest, I will put it right here, because it's a non-lethal stratagem, it won't really kill you, and it will mostly hinder you, but it will also hinder the enemy quite hard, so it's very, very, very good. The only downside it has, honestly, aside from it being non-lethal, is the fact that 
It takes a long time to shoot and it doesn't kill, as I mentioned. And if I remember correctly, it doesn't affect artillery towers and the bile titans, if I remember correctly. So you gotta be careful of that. But aside from that, if you complement the EMS mortar with the normal mortar, that's a really good combo. And a lot of people have used this for farming and it's still very viable. So that's the tier list. This is, the, this is what I think of every single stratagem in the game. It is ordered from left to right, by the way. Now, are there any knee-jerk reactions? Are there any questions? why i think of stuff like this why do i think something something does anybody have a question as to you know like why the fuck did you put this here or grrr, i don't like this here list being like this grrr. if anybody doesn't have an objection then yep, this is my personal tier list i obviously everybody has their own opinions everybody has their own thoughts about stuff but this is the general tears i think this is the general strength of every shadow gem in the game i think that every shadow gem is viable they're very strong a lot of them are good they have their own strengths they have their own weaknesses i think arrowhead did a very good job about you know making them strong but aside from that we have to face the reality of the fact that shadow gems are better than the other shadow gems some some are better than the others others are stronger than others you know so on and so forth but honestly you can just run whatever you want i i like running goofy setups sometimes as well so i'm not really fully i don't really fully follow this this tier list sometimes i like to use a heavy machine gun sometimes i like to use this sometimes i use mortars in normal missions sometimes i use like this and that and this run whatever you want enjoy the game play what play however you like you know and if you have questions about you know why i put certain tiers certain stuff in certain tiers you can you can leave it in the comments down below you can you, you can leave it down you can we can discuss about it just keep it civil you know i'm i don't really i'm not really a person that will attack people nor do i want people to attack other people over the tiers and what i think this is mainly just my tier list it's not objective it's a subjective tier. oh yeah that is my tier list for hell divers 2 currently airburst is s tier yeah airburst is up here bro